Well, welcome to Connection Online's worship service. I'm so glad you're here with us. To, we can gather together even here online and give God the glory that's due his name. And that's what we're going to do with this first song. We're just going to lift the name of Jesus. We're going to lift the name of our God who is above all else. Jesus, the name above every other name. We lift you up. We glorify you in this place. Oh, we exalt you. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are worthy, God, of all glory and honor, of all praise. Mighty in battle, perfect in love. You're awesome in wonder, faithful and just. You're matchless in mercy, wisdom and strength. You can be trusted in all of your ways. We're singing out, oh. Oh 
Yo! 
today and I want to tell you right now that we're about to partake of the Lord's Supper and if you need to pause so that you can go get uh, maybe some juice, some crackers, a little bread, something like that so that uh, you can you can pause, come back and then we, you can continue, you can do that at this time. Um, I want to read today from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And many of us have heard these verses, and I'm going to back up just a little bit because normally we don't go over this part, but I believe today this is important, and I, and I want to read it beginning in verse 20. And Paul is writing to the church of Corinthians, and he's giving correction, really, to the church. And he's giving instructions to the church because he loves the church. He's doing this, and he's speaking the truth in love. And here's what he says. He says, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry, and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. Now maybe you're going, what in the world is that? What is he meaning when you come to one place? Well, imagine this. Imagine, you know, we have a church fellowship, you know, after church, and we all get together, and we're going to eat. And certain people are in line getting their food. There's people over here hollering and yelling. And then it's like, oh, let's take the Lord's Supper in the middle of all this chaos. That's really kind of what Paul's talking about here. He's saying, you need to, when you do this, when you take the Lord's Supper, here's what he's saying. Respect honor the Lord. There is an order when we do the Lord's Supper. There is a type of, of spirit that we need to come into it with. It is one of reverence. It is one that, it's a serious thing. We are to remember what the Lord did together and we're to take it seriously so that the Lord can do a work within us. If we're nonchalant about it, if we just go, oh, well, we're doing this again. It's another communion Sunday. You know, the Lord's not going to touch us in the way that we need him to touch us. He's not going to instruct you in the way that you need. You're not going to have that touch in the way that you need that touch. And we're not honoring the Lord in the way that we need to honor him. So today, don't be condemned if, it, you know, if you've done that or you've been in that place. I just want to tell you, take communion seriously. And when you do, I believe that there is a touch from God, that God's going to touch you in a special way. If you reverence and honor the Lord, He honors that, and He blesses His people when we do that. When we honor His Word in any way, shape, or any, any place in the Word, when we honor His Word, He will honor us. 
us. So he continues on and he says, therefore, for our, excuse me, verse 23, for what I received from the Lord, which I also delivered to you. So in other words, he got instructions from the Lord and that's why he's writing these down. This is a direct word from God. Let's treat it as such. And here he says this, I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And so that that you have, you know, gotten, go ahead and take that bread. I'm going to do that now. So you take the bread. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. So we remember. We remember the Lord's sacrifice and what he did. This represents his body that was broken, that was bruised. And so let's bless it now. Father, right now, Lord, we take this, which represents your body, and we remember. We say we do remember. We say that we honor you today. We reverence you today. We take it seriously. And we open up our hearts to you today. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for giving of your body. In Jesus' name, you may partake. Then Paul says in the same manner, he took the cup. And he's quoting Jesus, how he did it with his disciples. He said he took the cup. This represents my blood, Jesus said. So this represents his blood that was shed for you and for me. This represents something more powerful than we could even understand, that we could even totally comprehend. One thing I know is that there's power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is power in the blood of Jesus. If you need a healing today, if you need a miracle today, if you're going through something and you need a miracle from God, know that his body was sacrificed for you. His blood was shed for you. And we remember this now. And we stand and we take him at his word. There's healing for you today, church. Let's believe it now. Father, right now, we take this that represents your blood. And we thank you that it covers all of our iniquities. It covers all of our sins. Lord, we thank you for your body again that was bruised, your blood that was shed. Lord, there's healing. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in your blood. And we say, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Get under our feet right now. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for the shedding of your blood. In Jesus' name. Father, again, we thank you for sending your son. We thank you for the sacrifice, Lord Jesus, that you made for all of us, for your body that was broken for us. Lord, so that we may have liberty and freedom in all things. Lord, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, I just want to welcome you today. Thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. And I believe that God has something special for you today. We're in our series of Romans. And uh, last week we took a break from Romans. We were at Freedom Fellowship Church and we were so blessed to be there and come together. And, I, and that's really my first announcement. I want you to know that this Saturday coming up, we're gonna be at Freedom Fellowship again. That's right, on Easter weekend, on Saturday morning, we're going to be there, we're going to record the service, and on Easter we'll be airing that service at 10 a.m. So, if you would like to come and be there, just come. You don't have to let us know or anything. we got a general idea of the numbers. We've got the chairs taken care of. And um, just come to Freedom Fellowship Church, come right in the door. Please bring a mask. Uh, if you forget, we do have some disposable masks, but bring that. We are going to still social distance. There's hand sanitizer there. We will be doing temperature checks at the door. We want to uh, be respectful of the church that we're going to and their rules and what they've laid out for us. So we agreed to that. Uh, they agreed to let us come, and we agreed 
to, to their rules there. So we want to respect and honor them in that. And you know what? Let's just do this really quick. I want us to pray and just agree as a church really fast and bless Freedom Fellowship Church. Can we do that? Father, right now, we just lift up Freedom Fellowship Church to you. Lord, we know that this morning they're having service right now. I thank you that you're with them, that you're blessing them. You're touching them by your spirit. Lord, just bless them, Lord, for blessing us. Lord, we thank you for just blessing them. Father, that your anointing, your spirit is there, and miracles are wrought in your name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, just continue to lift them up in prayer. Remember them and bless them because they've really blessed us, and they're going to continue blessing us moving forward. So I can't tell you how thankful I am for Freedom Fellowship Church. So this Saturday morning, we will be there again, 1030 a.m. on Saturday. Our service airs at 10 a.m. the next day online, same way you're listening now, Facebook and YouTube. So other announcements. If you have any prayer requests, be sure send them to prayer at churchpluggedin.com. Prayer at churchpluggedin.com. And if you uh, have a praise report, you can put that on there as well and email that. We, we like to hear about those as well. I'm trying to remember, Pastor Karrion, do I have any other announcements? Is that a midweek word? I almost forgot. Be sure, turn in to midweek word this Wednesday night. On the first Wednesday night of the month, we do monthly prayer, but on all the other weeks, we do a midweek word. Be sure, tune in at 7 p.m., on YouTube and Facebook, same way you're listening now. It's a short word. I believe you'll be blessed and touched by it. Uh, Ms. Rashonda did a wonderful word that we, we just heard last Wednesday Amen. night. So be sure, turn it, tune in on Wednesday night for the midweek word. All right. I think that's it. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Landy to bring the offering and open up your hearts and minds today, church, to receive the word. Elder Joe's going to be bringing the word today in Romans. Open up your heart and be ready to receive. All right. Brother Landy. All right. Good morning, church family. Good morning. It's time to give. Amen. Amen. You're ready to give. So we're going to uh, first start off by giving you the three ways that you can give. You can go to our website at churchpluggedin.com and click on the Give Now tab. You can also text your tithes and offerings to 703-997-4640, or you can mail in your tithes and offerings to the Connection Church, P.O. Box 7658. Woodbridge, Virginia, 22195. Today's passage, we want to go to a familiar passage in Romans chapter 10, verses 13 and 14, out of the New King James Version. And verse 13 reads, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher. Yes, for the Bible scholars out there, yes, today's passage does speak of the fact of the Israel's rejection of the gospel. But this morning, I want you to see something else in this passage. And I want you to see our role that we play in the lost receiving Christ. We see in verse 14 that the preaching of the good news comes before the believing. So when you and I give in support of the gospel, we're doing our part in ensuring everyone has the opportunity to hear about Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said in, Ma in Mark 16, 15, then shall the end come when all have heard. Amen. So with your tithes and offerings in your hand, let us pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of giving in support of your gospel, your good news being heard around the globe. You said in Ephesians 6, 8, that whatsoever good any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord. So we thank you for sending labors today to our friends and families who have not heard about Jesus, that we all may experience the abundant life you've called us to live. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And we want to thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Thank you. All right. Oh, that's good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Oh, you know, we serve such a good God. Oh, he's always on our side because he said he'd never leave or forsake us. He said, I'm a present help in a time of need. Amen. And I just so enjoy taking the Lord's Supper because we have to be, he said, this do in remembrance of me. But not only in remembrance of him, it also should bring us back to who we are in him. A lot of times we talk about who we are, but sometimes we got to think about whose we are. Because he said we were bought with a price. So we belong to him. And all things that we do should be to further the kingdom of God. Because that, that, that's our purpose here. Yes. That is our purpose here. You. you know, over the week I heard, um, I heard a joke. It was sort of, sort of humorous. You know, but everything I hear, whether it's carnal or not, I try to put a spiritual application to it. So this, this week I, I, I heard this joke, and it was, uh, it was about this, uh, this dog somehow got left in the jungle. So this dog was left in the jungle, and uh, he was frightened and walking around. Then all of a sudden, a lion sort of caught him in his sights. So this lion started running toward the dog, and the dog sitting there said, I know I can't outrun this lion, so what can I do? But the dog was right by a, a pile of bones. So when the lion got close enough to him, the dog said, man, I didn't know lion was this good. So the lion stopped saying, man, this dog might be tougher than I think he is. So the lion went on back and said, I ain't going to mess with him. In the meantime, this monkey was up in the tree checking everything out. So the monkey said, you know what? He driving that lion. This is my time to get in, tuck, get in, get, you know, get in tight with the lion so he can stop chasing me. So the monkey went down and said, man, this, this guy this guy driving you. He, ain't, he, he didn't eat no lion. Them bones was already there. So the lion got mad. So the monkey said, let's go get him. So the monkey jumped on the lion's back. So they started running back there toward the dog. And the dog said, I can't outrun him. So the dog looked up and said, monkey, where you been? You told me you're going to bring me another lion about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when I thought about that, you know, I thought about, you know, a lot of times, that's us because we got to know who we are. Mm -hmm. yes. See, if that lion only realized who he was, he wouldn't have went through all them changes. Mm -hmm. The dog wouldn't have deceived him, and the monkey wouldn't have deceived him because mm -hmm. he know who he, is, who, who he is. So a lot of times we got to know who we are in Christ mm -hmm. because we know that we were bought with a price. Mm -hmm. We know that Christ is always on our side because yes. he said he never leave us safe. He'd come alongside us. So when we, and some of you might be in, 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 in a situation where... where where, where, where you feel bogged down now. You feel like you, you sort of reached the end of your line. But that's not the end of your line. That's on the beginning of Christ working in your life. Because a lot of times you don't show up until you really, really need him. But you always got to be faithful and thank him for what you have. Christ always meets you where you are. So praise God, praise God. So we're getting into Romans. We're going to finish up. Uh, this week we're starting in chapter 7. Chapter 6 was good. And chapter 7 is sort of like a, it's sort of add to chapter 6 and a springboard to chapter 8. Because chapter 8 is really good. And chapter 6, most of the time, most of what we've been covering in chapter 7 is going to already be covered in chapter 6. But I want to go through it. I'm going to go through it rather, rather, rather quickly. So I'm not going to go through every verse and, and I'm not doing line by line. So you sort of need to keep up with me, all right? So have you ever done something knowing that it was wrong, but you did it anyway? <laughs> now, I'll be shocked if everyone said no. Because the Apostle Paul, he went through it. He wanted to do what was right, but he did what was wrong. So in chapter 7, we're going to discuss the fallacies of trying to live a Christian life in our own strength. If we can't do it, it's impossible. You know, in chapter 6, I'm going to read uh, Romans 6 and 16. I'll put it on the screen because this is going to be a springboard of where we're going into, in, into chapter 7. Romans 6 and 16, I'm reading our New King James Version. Do you know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. So in chapter 6, Paul gave an analogy of slavery. Because at that time, everybody understood what slavery was. They understood that 
that, that if you are, you are a slave to, 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 to the law and to sin, then your wages is death. But if you're a slave, slave unto righteousness, well, because when God paid the price for, when Christ paid the price for, we became him. So we are slaves to righteousness. We are slaves to him. Because we were bought with a price. Whether you, whether you believe it or not, we were bought with a price. We were bought with the blood of Jesus. And when he shed his blood, he put that stamp of approval on it. Now, now you are mine. Now you are mine. Now whether you act like it or not, you know, that's up to you. But you belong to Jesus Christ. So today we'll go to chapter 7. And Paul sort of expounds, like I said, uh, on, the, on, the, on the struggles of temptation and at the same time why he's loving God. And a lot of us, a lot of us experience that. We struggle with temptation. You know, we struggle with sin. But we can't say that we don't love God because we do. But it's our nature. So th today we're going to sort of dig down into that. So we'll focus on three areas in chapter 7. We'll say that we're, we have been delivered by the law. We'll say sin has an advantage over the law. And the third would say the law cannot save us from sin. That's right. The law cannot save us from sin. So let's go to the verse, first verse uh, in, in, uh, in Romans 7, 7, 1, 7, 1 and 6. Seven, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 3. Or do you know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over man as long as he lives. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of, of her husband. So then, while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law so that she is no adulteress through, though she is, has married another man. A lot of times when when people read this verse, they get stuck up on the marriage. They get stuck up, stuck up on, on the Moses' law and marriage. But Paul was using this as analogies because who, who, who he was talking to knew the law. Just like he used the analogy of slavery in, in chapter 6, now he's using this analogy so, that, so, so, so they can catch on to it. Because the law has dominion. And even in Romans 6 and 14, Paul told us that we was, un, we was not under law but under grace. But in Romans 6 through 15 and 23, Paul details our practical applications that he explains more completely how we're no longer under dominion of the law. Because the law, the law has dominion over man as long as he lives. A lot of times they say, okay, we know someone has to die. So who died in this application? Did the law die? No, the law did not die. Who died in this application was Jesus Christ. Jesus died, and we died with him. So when we died with Christ, the law has no more dominion over us because we are dead to the law because we died with Christ and we rose with his resurrection, and now we live in with him, but we have no, the has, law has no dominion over us because we died to the law. So the law did not die. Jesus died. And we died with him. So now the law has no dominion over us. No dominion. In verse 4, like I said, I'm running through it right quick, so you know, keep up. <laughs> Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we shall bear fruit to God. See, Jesus' death freed us from the bondage and the dominion of the law. Because we have become dead through the bite of Christ. And as Romans 6 and 8, Paul carefully explained that we died with Jesus and we also rose with him. Although Paul there has once spoke of the, the death to sin, now he explains we also had to die to the law. Because in chapter 6, remember, he said that we are dead to sin. But now Paul saying you're not only dead to sin, you are dead to the law because now we are spiritual. We'll get into that later. That you may marry to another. Because we're dead to the law don't mean that we can just be free. That means once we die to the law, 
It's like anything else. Once Jesus comes in and clean your heart, if you don't put anything in the place of it, something is going to take its place. That's when sin can come in. Just like when we are divorced or we are free from the law, what takes its place? So now we are married to Christ. We're married to Christ. That's why they say the church is the bride, the bride of Christ. We are married to him now. We are divorced from the law, but we're married to the commandments of God and Christ. Let me go to first five. Got to keep up with me. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passion were aroused by the law and at work in our members to bear fruit unto death. Now, when we talk about fruit, I'm sorry, I missed, I missed, did I I miss, did I miss a verse? Okay. Let me go back to four. Let me go back to verse four. Something I missed, I I really want to clear up. When it said, therefore, my brother, you also become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we shall bear fruit unto God. Well, we're talking about that fruit unto God. You know, when I go to Galatians, in, in Galatians 5, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You know, a lot of times we stop there. But that very last sentence said, against such there is no law. Just think about that. Because now Paul also wrote, wrote, wrote to Galatians and said, you know, if we bear fruit to God, then there is no law against that. So it's no law. So we're dead to the law, but we are free to bear fruit to God, fruit to, to our Savior. Now let me go to five. For when we are in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. Now what is fruit to death? said the wages of sin is death. So also in Galatians, in 5, you know, it tells us that now the works of the flesh are evident where are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, self-ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, robberies, and the like. We are producing fruit to death. Because that fruit only produces death. So what is the problem with the law? When we was in the flesh, we were under the law, and we did not bear fruit to God. We bore fruit to death because the law aroused the passions of sin within us. To bear fruit to death, but we see at this point that we only come fully to the place of bearing fruit for God when we are free from the law. So to bear fruit to God, we have to be free from sin and the law. In verse 6, but now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not to the oldness of the letter. See, we are new creatures. We are new creatures now, and we serve to the newness of the spirit and not to the letter of the law. Right. Yeah. So when we get to the letter of the law, then we move into what we call, uh, what word I want to use, uh, legalism. When you try to live your life to the letter of the law, then you're legalistic. Right. See, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit because God has given us that he said that, that I've given you my spirit. The spirit of God dwells in us. So now we bear fruit to righteousness. And we're no longer legalistic on to living by the letter of the law. See, the law does not justify us. It doesn't make us right with God. The law does not sanctify us. It does not make us deeper with God or make him holy with, before him. The law does none of that. But our freedom is not given so that we can stop serving God, but we can serve him better under the newness of the spirit 
and not the oldness of the letter. How well do we serve the news of the Spirit? It is a shame that we serve sin or legalism with more devotion than those who serve God in the newness of life. Is it unfortunate when fear motivates us greater than love? You know, when you think about it, when you think about the law and the commandments, Jesus, the, the commandments were, you take, you take the law of Moses and think about the Ten Commandments. But when Jesus died, and he said there were two commandments, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and the soul, love your neighbor as thyself. And he said on these two commandments, he in all the laws of the prophets. All the laws of the prophets. So the law of Moses, all the laws that was sent down from the prophets, if we just follow the two commandments that Jesus gave us, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul and love your neighbor as thou self, we cover everything that was given by the prophets. So we are free. He given us liberties and freedoms to serve him. Okay, in chapter, did I do chapter six, verse 6? Well, I'm losing my spot. Okay, let's talk about sin's advantage to the law. I'll go down to the verse 7. What shall we say then of the law sin? <clears throat> Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law said, has said, you shall not covet. Is the law sin? If we follow the train of thought, we can understand that someone might, in, might, might infer this. Paul insists that we must die to the law if we bear fruit to God. So surely there means something wrong with the law. There's nothing wrong with the law. The law is good because what it does, what, does, what the law do? <clears throat> Reveal sins in us. Just think about it. If there were no speed limit posted, you would never know that you were speeding. That's right. You would never know that you were speeding. But because there is a law, then you know that you are speeding because it posted the law. And because of man's nature, because he said, oh, speed limit 65, oh, I can squeeze that to 70. It ain't no problem. Right. We all guilty with because that's our nature. We sort of push things to the point where uh, we always want to push, let, let, let's say, push the envelope. And even with the laws and the commandments of God, we always like to push the envelope. And it's always like that. We like to push the envelope. The law is like an x-ray machine. When you think about it, it reveals, what's in, it's, 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 it reveals what is hidden in us. But you can't blame the x-ray for what it exposes. You can't blame it. And that's what the law does. It reveals our sins. But we can't blame the law for revealing our sins. So the law is good. And when you think about, and when Paul said, I wouldn't have known covenants unless they said I covered. And just like the same with the speed limit. See, Paul would know that he would be in covetous not unless someone said that he covered. So the law is a, is a gauge. It sort of keeps us, it sort of measures our sin, even though sin, a sin is a sin. And the measurement of sin don't matter. A sin is a sin. But sin take the opportunity <clears throat> by the commandments. Let me go to verse 8. But sin take an opportunity by the commandments produce in me all manner of evil desires. For apart from the law, sin was dead. You think about it. The sin take the opportunity of the commandments. You know, you're always warning, don't do that. When they say don't do that, that's when you really do it. Let me tell you about we. I, when I was younger, we had a uh, mom always told us, don't go up there and steal them plums. <laughs> and the man said, don't be messing in my plum tree. I don't want to catch you messing with my plum tree. But every day, as soon as mom left work, what do we do? Go on trying to get some plums. 
Go and try to get some plum. You know the best way to keep people from trespassing on your property? Don't put up a no trespassing sign. <laughs> if you don't put up the sign, it'll never tempt them to go trespassing. <laughs> you know, I read this article one time where the guy said uh, it was down in Florida, and he, had a, and he had a hotel and was right on the water. And he put up the sign, no fishing from the balcony. As soon as he put up the sign, everybody tried to fish from the balcony and breaking the windows and stuff because they're throwing their line out. You know how the dude got rid of it? He took down the signs. When he took down the sign, then no one was tempted to break the law. No one was tempted to push the envelope. But that's in our nature. Wow. Our nature is to push the envelope. So seeing Paul saying apart from the law, sin was dead. Because if you don't know the law, then there is no law for you to be sinful too. So that's what the law does. The law is a gauge. It looks in our heart. It shows us just how much we are sinning. Verse 9. I was alive, I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. See, children can be innocent before they know or understand what the law requires. And that's what Paul said when I was alive once without the law. Because when the com commandment came, when we come to, come to know the law, the law shows us our guilt. And it excites our rebellion, bringing forth more sin and bringing forth more death. Our nature. Our nature to push the envelope. But we'll get to something, we'll get a, we'll get to a cure for it. We'll get a cure for it. All right, I'm going to read verse 10, 11, and 12 together. And the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin taking occasion by commandment deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. You know, if we were taking an uh, English course, we'll probably, we'll probably get an F if we, if we use that last, if we lose verse 12. But it stood out that the commandments, holy and just and good. Because, you know, in formal English, they'll say, oh, you can't say that. Put a comma there and say and at the last one. But, you know, sin corrupts and defeats the purpose of giving life. Once the law is corrupted by sin, it brings death. That's all it can bring. All it can bring is death. And the commandment which bring death, I found to bring death. Sin does this by deception. And Pastor T.J. covered this on, in chapter 8 very well. Sin brings deception. I think he, I think he described it as chocolate-covered feces. <laughs> See, sin deceives us because sin falsely promises satisfa satisfaction. Sin will promise you, oh, man, you enjoy this. Just go out and do it. Who, who going to who, who know? You will enjoy this. And sin falsely claims an accurate excuse. Man, I did that, man, because uh, I ain't have no other choice. You know, ain't nobody going to blame me for doing that. And sin falsely promises an escape for punishment. Because we think if we, get, we do, if we sin, we're going to get away with it. It's no, it's, there's no way we can be caught. But you're always caught when you thought, when you, when you, when you even think it. Because see, that's what Jesus put it, put it in our heart. The laws are in our heart now. He gives us that, that, that conviction. So we know when, when we are wrong. We know when sin has, has, has control over because we are convicted. He gives us that conviction when we're about to do anything wrong. Because a lot of time, I, when I, was, I spent 30 years in the Marine Corps, and a, and, a, and a lot of time guys come up to me and say, well, you know, something told me it was wrong before I did it. Uh, yeah. 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 It's the Holy Spirit. But God said before you sin, he said, I will always give you a way to escape. And at that, at that very moment was your way to escape when the Holy Spirit prompted you, is this the right thing to do? But our nature. And our flesh overrode it. Overrode it. 
And see, that's what Paul was going through right now. He's going through this. And he said, uh, the wages of sin is death. Sin, when followed, leads to death and not life. That's the only thing sin, sin can lead to. Therefore, the law, is ho- the law is holy. It is true that we must die to sin and we must die also to the law. In order for us to serve God in our fullest capacity, we have to die to sin and die to the law. Because Paul said in his word, he said, I die daily. He said, I put my flesh under daily. And see, it's that flesh. Because when we get further and further into it, I'm going to show you how, how, how man, when he, when he says, oh, wretched man that I am, what is man? Man is spirit, soul, and body, or what you want to call flesh. A lot of people say flesh in the place. And we'll find out that we, we're fighting and we're battling in that soulish realm. Because the spirit knows what to do. The flesh want to do what it wants to do. And the soul is caught in the middle. So that's why they say in one of the scriptures said, <clears throat> though the word of God, because he has the power to what? Save your soul. Mm-hmm. And see, that's what it's saying. It has the power to save your soul. When you are no longer in that, in, in that balance on what to do, whether to do right or to do wrong, your soul controls it. And see, that's what Paul is going through right now. We'll, 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 we'll get to that later. You know, it is true that we must die to sin and we must die to the law. The problem is in us. The problem is us, not the law. Nevertheless, sin corrupts the work or affects the law, so we must die to both. We must die to sin and we must die to the law. You know what? I think I'm going to stop there. You know... Because I don't want to get into this next one because this, this next one we really have to keep our minds on what Paul is trying to tell us and what Paul is going through. See, in the next second, Paul is going through a lot of things that we go through. He's suffering through a lot of things that we suffer through today. Mm-hmm. You know, he's suffering through the world has so much that they throw at us now. Even on the political side, even when we, when we go to work, we're, we're confronted with so many different things. Right. And, and everything is real time in this world. Mm-hmm. When something happens, we know about it real time. And we have the Internet and all this stuff online that's, that's tempting a lot of people. When you get online, you could be, I mean, you could be just cruising through Christian, Christian stuff online. All of a sudden, something else pop up. Because they're trying to get your mind. They're trying to work into your soulless realm. Trying to deceive you like sin does. What I want to do, I read excerpts from Galatians when I said the fruit of the spirit. But what I want to do, I want to read that in context. I'm reading from Galatians 5, 15 to 23 out of New King James Version. But if you bite... And devour one another. Beware, lest you be consumed by one another. I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. And see, when we get further down, we'll see that what Paul is going through, the thing that we struggle. Because a lot of times we don't do what we wish to do. But what Paul said, what he will to do. But if you think about it, what is the will? The will is your soulless realm, your mind, will, and, and emotions. So when you will to do a thing, that's when you put your mind to it. And a lot of times we don't do what we put our mind to because we are deceived by sin. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissension, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, and rivalries, and like that, and, and, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, 
just as I also told you in time past, to those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Because you are bearing fruit to sin. You are bearing fruit to death. But 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. There is no law. So, brothers and sisters, if you're struggling today, if you're going through things where sin is, is, is becoming, you have a besetting sin or, or, or you have problems uh, getting through the day without performing some kind of sin, be led by the Holy Spirit because God has already empowered you. You have the power to overcome sin. Because he has taken away sin. He's take, he taken away sin, even took the sting out of death. Once we, once we receive him and accept him, God is willing and God is able to deliver you from all destruction, to deliver, to, to deliver from all your distresses. The only thing you got to do is believe and rely on him. Amen. Trust in God. The truth says trust him with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Don't try to figure things out. Don't try to figure, okay, how this going to happen? How God going to get me out of this? You don't worry about that. He said, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. So whatever you're going through, let's rely on God. Let's rely on him. Because he died for it all. We know we took communion this morning. We know that everything that Jesus died for, everything that he's given us, everything that besets us right now, all our sickness, all our injury, all our temptation that he took to the cross. He nailed it to the cross. I just said, well, 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 Elder Joe, he didn't take temptation. No, he didn't take temptation, but he gave you a way to escape. <laughs> he said, we're not tempt you above that you are able. But for every temptation, he'll give you a way of escape. So he took it all for us. The only thing we got to be humble. You know, this morning when I, when I uh, always try to consecrate myself and I listen to music and I go, I go in and pray for a couple of hours. And this morning I was, I was listening to the music and the song came up that surrounded you know, a lot of us feel surrounded. A lot of us feel trapped. A lot of us feel surrounded by what's happening in the world right now. But the song said, maybe you feel like you're surrounded, but he's surrounding you. You know, we got to know that at all times that God has surrounded us. You know, we might have temptation. temptation. We might have enemies trying to attack us, but we know the battle is not ours. Say, God will fight our battles. We got to realize that that same God that was in that line then with Daniel, that same God that was in the fiery pit with Meshach, Meshach, uh, uh, the, the Hebrew boy, the same God, the same God that parted the Red Sea, the same God that stood on that void and said, Light be, that same God is with us right now. He said, I will come alongside of you. So if you're having a problem today, go to God. A lot of times, the only thing you have to do is sometimes just take time to worship. If you just take time to worship, God will fill in all those voids. If you just take time to acknowledge him, you will never have to go through what you're going through. Brothers and sisters, try God. If you don't know him right now, try him. Try him. And if you do know him, let him dwell and let him do what he need to do in your life. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Oh, it's nothing like the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That we can be led by the Spirit in every situation. Even God said, if you don't know what to pray, the Spirit give you utterance for it. So he give utterance for what, I mean, he leads you in what you, what you want to do. 
and what you don't want to do, but he also leads you in prayer. If you don't know what to pray for, the Spirit gives you utterance. He's given us all. God has given us all things that deal with life and godliness. Everything that we need to live prosperously is already on this earth. You hear that? Everything you need to live prosperous is already on this earth. Because God said he's given us every seed bearing fruit. He's given us everything to heal us. It's already on this earth. It's already here. The only thing we got to do is have faith to receive it. Have faith to receive it. So let us pray this morning. Let us pray that we know who God is. And keep reminding ourselves on who we are in him. And we know that God is more than able to perform his word in our life. He's more than able. And the only thing we got to do is have faith. Because our faith and our, our confidence shouldn't be in us. Our confidence should be in his faithfulness. Because we serve a God that has never failed and is never late. We serve a God. He says he never sleeps or slumbers. <laughs> so why do we stay awake at night worrying about it? There's no need for both of us to lose sleep because God never sleeps. So you should have peaceful rest. So let's know it. Let, let's pray and, and, and just release it right now in the name of Jesus. Release, release those things that's, that, that's bogging us down. Release those things, that, those sins that beset us. And let us know that God has already taken them and nailed them on the cross. So, Father, this morning we thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Father, we thank you for your word, the word that you confirmed was signs following. The word you said would not return unto you void. So we thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. The word you sent to heal, the word you sent to destroy yokes and to lift burdens. Father, we bring that word to your remembrance right now. You said, remind me of your word. So we're reminding you, Father, that we're in this place where we're, where we're being distressed. And Father, we just tore our curls on you. You said, cast your curls on him because he curls for you. So cast your curls this morning. On the one who is more than able to supply your needs. So, Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor for your word being so and your word being true. And, Father, we thank that you have surrounded us. And, Father, we thank that you have given your angels to surround us because you said your angels excelled in strength, hearkening to the voice of your word. So, this morning, we give your word voice. We speak your word in the atmosphere. And we charge our angels to go forth and cause those situations, cause those circumstances to work out according to our confession of faith. So, Father, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you because you are truly our God and our Lord. And besides you, there is none other. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So if you heard this word this morning, please, if you're, if you're not saved, you know, matter of fact, if you're not saved, just repeat after me. Father, I thank you right now. I know that Jesus came to this earth and he died for me and he rose again. And now I know he sits at the right hand of the Father. And I acknowledge him as being my Lord and I receive him in my heart right now. In Jesus' name, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that he is the son of God. And I thank you. And if you repeated that, now you are now saved. Yes. So find yourself a Bible-believing church. or ain't, ain't no better place than this right here. Amen. 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 And I thank you. I bless, I, 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 bless, I bless the Lord this morning. And I hope the word, the, the hope the word will land on good soil and produce fruit in your life. Don't forget about the, the announcement. Don't forget about midweek word. Don't forget about next Saturday because we should have a high time. I, I so much enjoyed the service last week. So next, next Saturday, put it on your calendars. Make sure you show up. And the midweek word, and don't forget about, uh, and I'm missing anything. And Bible study. Bible study is great. Last week, the, um, Friday nights, I, I, so, I so enjoy Bible study Friday nights. I mean, it's, it's, it's open form. And I learned so much because I know iron sharpens iron. So if you want, if you want to join us, you know, just, just email me because uh, it, it's open form, and we really, we really discuss the word. And you, and you will be blessed. All hearts satisfied. We thank you. We'll see you Wednesday night. God bless you.